Uh, obviously, a, a busy, uh, busy week ahead of us here with uh, two outstanding teams here. Uh, first up at Iowa. Uh, really respect this Iowa team. I think they're really. Good. I think it's. A, I don't think. Yeah, I really believe it's the best Iowa team that that we've played in our three years. And they were good last year. Last year they were. I think just a maybe a last minute. I think it was Tennessee that. Was, came down to the wire for the Sweet 16, so they were they were very good last year. Um, but uh, uh, as I've always said, whenever you play them, Fran's got a great system. Um, they play really, really hard at home. It's uh, it's a different animal in a lot of ways because uh, great uh, great home crowd and uh, great environment. Their energy energy is terrific. I don't think they've lost since maybe November at home. Uh, there's a reason for that. Um, uh, well coached, tough, talented group. Obviously, Garz is having a great year, but they've got a lot of really good uh, uh, players that that impact the game. You know, uh, the coach's son McCaffrey. He's a really tough kid that uh, has a great feel for. Um, how to get his teammates involved and play in the win and just you can't turn him over and he's really tough and tough-minded. Got a lot of other guys that uh, that, that, that really complement a guy like Garza. When you're at this part of the season, you're able to sort of dial in on some rotations and, and you're playing you know, pretty uh, set number of guys. What enables you to get to that point in the season? Is it just once you get in the Big Ten, you and you, you kind of have a better feel for guys. What does it take to, to identify roles like that and be able to get to that point of the season? Well, I think you, it's a lot of it's what you go you, what you go through together. You know, I think you're you so, a lot of that uh, guys kind of settle into roles, have a better understanding of what's expected of them, and Ross, uh, rotations typically taper back by a player or two this time of year. Whatever it was going into it, it typically tapers back to a a player or two. Um, so, and some of that also has been, it's been a little bit fluid with us because of some injuries. Um, well, when you do settle in on some things and it's been a little bit consistent here the last couple of games, do you have to have conversations with guys that aren't, that find themselves on the outside or if, if they maybe see the roles change a little bit? What, what's the communication like with guys to make sure that everyone's on the same page? Yeah, I think you're always, you're, you're you know, you're always in communication, um, you know, with guys, but uh, listen, they, they understand that uh, it ha it's something that's earned, and there's a there's a process and a time period that's different for everybody. Um, um, but yeah, I think you're always kind of staying in. You, you value what everybody brings. You know, Danny Elmer's a guy that hasn't played a minute, and yet he's really valuable for us in terms of uh, preparing our team. So um, he and Harry and those guys are, are really important, and yet they don't see the floor. Jordan didn't do it against you guys last year, especially in the second game, and, and now obviously he's in the National Player of the Year conversation. Are you scouting him right now compared to where he was a year ago? What, what's different about him from, from your eyes? Well, I think he's just a year older for one, elite shape. I think he's in incredible condition for a guy as big as he is. Um, he's got tremendous touch. I, I think being a year older has, has helped him. You know, that, that doesn't always, but you it's clear he put in tremendous work in the offseason with his conditioning, his fitness, his shooting. Um, and then he's, he's obviously incredibly physical. But I just think his motor is uh, what people point to when they watch him that makes him so special. And when, um, just looking at your guys' starting lineup, I thought it was throughout the entire losing streak when, when, you guys, uh, when things were going your way, you, you still rode Luther in the starting lineup. Um, even when he wasn't giving you a ton offensively. And, and now he's, it seems like in the past few games, he's shooting better from the outside. Well, why, did you, why did you choose to ride him in, in some of those tough moments? And, and what can you attribute this, uh, to this recent outside shooting to? Well, I, I, uh, I thought he was giving us some good things. And I thought his shot quality, while he was not efficient, uh, but I thought he was, for the most part, taking pretty good ones. Um, and I thought his, his attitude was good in a good place. Um, uh, again, similar to last year, I thought he looked he looked a little fatigued to me. He had, he, and he, he has lost weight, um, so we're trying to monitor that a little bit more. He just looked a little bit run down, which I think affected his his shooting performance. Um, 
but um, and, and some of that, uh, this obviously with DJ out is we have three guards that are playing two, the, almost all of the minutes at two positions. So, um, you know, we need those guys to perform at their highest level uh, when they're asked to do that. And he's done a good job of that here of late. But his, his energy defensively did not change, which was the main reason we stuck with him. Chris, how much uh, freedom does uh, Orange have to shoot the ball? He's got the green light. Yeah, he's got the green light. Play just, you know, whenever he's open. I thought he's he's actually taken better ones than than he did when he was in limited yeah. uh, when Justin was was more limited in his minutes and some of that is guys who identify with shooting feel feel like they got to come and snap it off as soon as they get in the game not always the best for them but uh, he settled in to kind of the times where he'll go five six minutes and won't shoot he's just got to stay aggressive he's supremely confident right now our guys have done a great job finding him. Chris, with what you were just talking about with uh, Luther, um, Dwayne and, and CJ at the moment are not shooting particularly well either. How much of that do you attribute to what you were just saying that you have three guys, those two in particular, who are being asked to do a lot right now? Maybe if that's a, uh, something you're conceding at the moment. I think it's 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 part of it. Um, you know, I think some of it is growing. You know, growing into a different role. Um, <coughs> CJ, I think, learning our system better. And see, both guys at time, really both times have struggled at times to be um, as efficient as we'd like them to be or they'd like to be. So I don't think it's going to be an overnight thing for, for either player. Um, and you can include Luther in that. I just think that's a growth process for all three guys. Uh, because they've they've all kind of struggled with that throughout their careers. With with Dwayne, how different is it for a guy who really for the first half of the year was a pretty deadly kind of catch and shoot guy, and now he obviously has the ball more. Like how how much different is that finding your three point shot when you're in those sort of scenarios? Well, you know, I I think it it does. His shots are coming at different places, and uh, with the exception of kind of post kickouts, he may not be getting it you know, off the pass quite as much. Maybe it's coming off more off the dribble. But I, I think it's something he likes, honestly. I think he enjoys uh, the ball in his hands and being able to, to facilitate and see himself uh, in that role of, of more of a combo. I think he's, I think he's enjoyed that um, transition a little bit that, that's happened, uh, that we were in the process of doing a little bit even when, when DJ was still with us. But it's, it's certainly been more apparent now. And I was asking uh, Kyle and Justin about this when they were here earlier, and I don't, I don't want it to come off the wrong way, but because I'm not making fun of the guy, but when Caleb has a play where he just like loses the ball when he's going out for a dunk, and like he by himself in front of everybody, and it comes in a game where you win, and like it didn't really matter, can it be like an important moment of levity at all for you guys when you're in the middle of a season where everything seems so serious? Obviously, you'd rather yeah. have score, but can, yeah. like, can there be any good that comes out of that? Yeah, yeah, I, I think, listen, that's. Um... In, in those situations, I don't know that it does. I know I, I have people hitting me up saying, you know, Caleb's got to do 25 minutes of mic and drills right after right after the game. Okay, all right. We'll move on. Um, I think you don't want to embarrass a kid in that in that situation. He understood. You know, he was in front of everybody. He understands he got to go up with two hands and make the play and finish the play. Caleb cares about you know, doing doing the right thing. He's still learning and growing, you know. So I think his teammates kind of had fun with him. I know he was probably a little embarrassed. Hopefully the next time he'll go and finish that play. Will DJ play or attend this game? No, no. I, I think there's, you know, there, there's, there's a lot that has to happen before that's even in the conversation. Um, you know, medically and in terms of overall health. So I, I no, that's that's not even been uh, consideration. Are you hopeful of getting him back this year, or should is that? Yeah, I'm, I'm really year? just um, outside of really focusing on our team. It's a, it's a valid question for sure. Um, I would say as it pertains to him, I'm I'm, I'm hopeful that he um, that we can get him on a path towards 
towards health, um, towards improved health. That's the only priority. And, um, you know, I think obviously we're late in the season, so you can draw your own conclusions on that. It's late, it's late in the year, and uh, he's been away for a while. So, um, but, you know, if and when he returns, there's a, there's a lot that goes into, when you leave for medical reasons, there's a lot that goes into being in any way acclimated back, really even outside of our hands, acclimated back into to any type of organized activity. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to get at was it's not as simple as like, okay, I'm ready to come back, so yeah. I'll grab my uniform and I play. Yeah, right. When, when you leave for... Uh, or when a player is, is, is kind of pulled away for medical reasons, specifically mental health, you're exactly right. There is, um, there's very specific and extended protocol um, that, that goes into that. In, and it's to protect, right, the player. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty extensive. So, um, you know, that's about as much as I can say on that. Just one on Kyle Young. Um, I know you recruited him at Butler. I know there's a lot to love about his game, but when there's a perception when you're here, you can recruit a different kind of player. Did you have, you know, he's coming out of school now yeah. with his skill set. Does he fit what you do here, or is he here because you were in a number crunch and you yeah. had him in a relationship and all that stuff? Yeah, valid question. Um, absolutely. And I would certainly hope that we would never deviate from. A young man like that that is in our bread basket or recruiting bread basket or specifically in our state but uh, absolutely does he you know does he have things he has to work on like every player and you know sure and did we understand there were going to be some maybe some challenges offensively at times at this level sure but uh, absolutely uh, we, we would uh, recruit him if we were here Last one, Stephen. This game. Last I'm actually. If, if we want to go two more, because I don't have to go to film. Oh, right. Okay. This game last year was a pretty significant win, given yep. the circumstances of yep. the team. Yep. Justin, the, the, the conference that you gave him, because of the similar situation you guys were in in January and how you kind of rebounded from that. Does it feel similar as far as you know coming into this week with the two games you have lined up? Well, I, I think I think every game's important this time of year. We're, we're, we're very, you know, despite the records being somewhat similar, um, we're very different in terms of the, when you just look at the, um, the quality of wins across the board, it's, it's a significant difference than, than it was last year. Um, in a lot of ways, the numbers all, you know, back that up. Having said that, like it's a, every game at this point of year for, for I think all of us in the Big Ten, we all look at being really, really crucial, um, you know. But it is different. The, the, the seasons are very different, even though they can appear kind of on the surface to be similar in a lot of ways. When you look at the numbers, they're, they're different. They're definitely different. And just for clarification, just for, I, it's probably not going to play in this year, but because of the closeness and where this game is at, is there an expectation that maybe he might attend the game or DJ might be there on Thursday? I, I don't believe so. Yeah, I don't believe so. What did you think when John Beeline went to the NBA about his ability to adapt? And what do you think that it's ending this quickly? And, and, and I wonder if that thoughts, there's this thought that, wow, that's the highest level as pure basketball, you know, that yeah. itch that some guys have. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so are you asking me specifically on him or? Or just, yeah, all that. Yeah, I think uh, it was surprising, sure. John's an incredible coach. And, um, you know, I think Coach Beeline's record speaks for itself. He's an incredible coach. And I think we all looked at it and said, hey, it's going to be an understandable rebuild there. And, and, and you know, there'll be a different organization in two or three with, with John at the, at the helm, but you know it didn't work out that way. Who knows uh, the specifics of all of it? Um, you know he'll he'll land on his feet. You know I've got plenty of friends who are um, in at that level, and uh, we've had a lot of conversations about the differences um, that they appreciate about being at that level after having been in college and, and some of the challenges as well. So 
it's an interesting conversation that you know we've had on occasion. Because you did bring him up a few minutes ago, Danny Hummer, um, he's coming up on senior night for him, and he's a guy we don't see very much. How have you seen him make an impact? I mean, he joined the program shortly after you did, you know, trying to just yeah. get bodies and things like that. What sort of impact has he made in his time? You know, Danny Hummer's been he's been outstanding for us. You know, he's been outstanding. We wanted to kind of add. Um, if we could, um, an Ohio kid, and uh, it just so happened, to, you know, this Ohio kid that, that lives just down the grew up just down the road at Upper Arlington, and um, he, he's he's been phenomenal for us. Just in terms of his ability to push our players every day, he brings a level of uh, an older body and a level of toughness that's that's really been needed uh, for us. Um, I can't say enough about him. His contribution. Okay. Okay. Thank you.